not grow weary they will walk and not be faint let's pray father we thank and praise you for your powerful word whole land he is the god who is able to divide the waters open up the oceans and make it that in the middle of the ocean he is able to make a way in the desert where you don't have signposts you don't have roads you can't ask anyone for direction because there's nobody there even in the desert there is a god who is able to make a way he's able to give you a signpost he is able to give you a way a direction even in the middle of the desert and take you to the right destination hallelujah i know what it is to go in a path where there are no signposts and there is nobody whom you can ask how to go or where to go or which way to turn for a whole day a bunch of us were in a van going to a certain place where we where neither the driver of the vehicle nor the one who was escorting us have never been to that place and nobody knew where how to go which way to turn and we were going into an a very hostile environment full of army men guarding a a war torn place post war and we were driving through um forests we were di- driving through uh just mud roads which have marks of landmines placed all around and in and marks of uh, army tanks and remains of bombed buildings and vehicles army tanks bombed arms and ammunition you know scattered everywhere and we were driving through for a whole day from morning early morning at 5 o'clock in the morning and we did not know where we were going and we did not know how we whether we would get back this was post war um at sri lanka after the ltt were defeated recently and we were going to the heartland of where the war happened and the final uh, war happened mullaitiv and and for a whole day there was nobody to ask and we are all tamilians going into this place <laughs> you know it's dangerous to say you are a tamilian in certain places and it was at that same time you know singhalese people who were coming on a pilgrimage here to trichy were beaten up by the local tamil politicians here at a very hostile situation while we were crossing through a uh, army uh, border check post they challenged us and said you know we are sending you here inside safely but our people are getting beaten up in your in your state you know it's dangerous to hear words like that and there comes forests and 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 just jungles and just land just open land and just mud everywhere dirt everywhere and we just driving and driving and just you know but god is able to make a way even in such places where you can't find a signpost where you can't find a way where you can't ask anybody for help you can't ask anyone for direction do i do this or do i do that have i done the right thing have i done the wrong thing when you have no signpost when you have no direction god is the one who is able to come there and say i am the everlasting god hallelujah look at who he is who he is helps us to know what he can do in our lives how he can operate how he operates in our lives that's why it looks like you are di- blindfolded at times that's why it feels like you know you're dumbfounded you don't know what to do that's why you don't find an answer for your question or you don't find a reason for why things are happening the way that are they are happening because of the nature of god because he is the everlasting god and he is a self sustaining one as a self sustaining one who is able to do things suddenly supernaturally sustain you and i without 
any signpost without any direction without you know giving us any answer for the for the for the reasonable or the logical questions that we might have because he's such a god he leads us in such ways and places where we can't understand where we can't comprehend where we feel so weak where we feel so helpless not that he puts us in situations like that to look at us and say oh how sad about you not to just take pity on us because of what's going on in our lives but to show himself for who he is to reveal his power to to help us to know that he is the everlasting god we walk through the waters we walk through the fire to show us that he is a self sustaining one that he doesn't need conducive circumstances to sustain us he doesn't need all provision of money and material things and men and influences to sustain us he doesn't need all of those things but he just can make us to go and function and live and exist and thrive and be blessed without all of the things that man demands to uh, have or seen as things that are of necessity to be sustained but those things of necessity don't need are not needed for our god to sustain us hallelujah do you see that that question is a challenging question do you not know have you not heard the lord is the everlasting god the creator of the ends of the earth the creator of the ends of the earth he created the garden of eden he created the rivers to water them he created man to keep watch over them he created those things to sustain and provide for man he creates everything on every side to make it function the way it ought to he puts things in its place he puts things in its place he he positions things rightly he makes things to function in the way it ought to we read a beautiful verse in hebrews would you turn to hebrews and chapter number 2 in fact we find it uh, right from one we will read a few verses here chapter 2 also hebrews chapter 1 in the past god spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and various ways but in these last days he has spoken to us by his son whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom he made the universe the son the son capital s the son of god is the radiance of god's glory and the exact representation of his being the son of god is a radiance of god's glory and the exact rep- representation of his being sustaining all things by his powerful word after he had provided purification for sins he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven and so he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs was three the sun is the radiance of god's glory and the exact representation of his being sustaining all things by his powerful word sustaining all things by his powerful word god is the one who sustains everything by his word god is the one who created everything by his powerful word he is also the one who sustains everything by his powerful word and as the one who created as as the one who sustains everything by his powerful word he is the one who is also able to create everything for us he is the one who is able to sustain everything that he has granted to us whatever he has placed in your hands whatever responsibility whatever you have been committed to whatever has been handed down to you he is able to sustain it he is able to provide for it he is able to keep it going he is able to give what you need what it takes 
to keep it alive thriving he is the one who creates he is the one who sustains and as the one who created everything and sustains everything not just the universe not just all of his creation but everything that is needed for our lives everything that is that is due for us everything that is about us he is able to sustain and create as the one who is able to do that we look to him we trust him we believe in him you see what happened to abraham in romans chapter 4 a great illustration about how this god who is the everlasting god is a powerful god who is with us in romans chapter 4 and verse 16 onwards therefore the promise comes by faith so that it may be by grace may be guaranteed to all abraham's offspring not only to those who are of the law but also to those who are of the faith of abraham he is the fa- father for, of all of us you you see that's talking about us not just about the people who are under the law not only about those who are under the law but also to those who are of the faith of abraham the promise comes by faith so that it may be by grace and may be guaranteed to all of abraham's offspring you and i are abraham's offspring jesus looked at that woman who was bent over for 18 years crippled by a spirit of infirmity she said he said to her daughter of abraham daughter of abraham a person of the faith an offspring of abraham a person of the faith who has the same kind of faith that abraham had who believed god and it was credited to him as righteousness it was not after he was circumcised not after any of the promise that was given but even before the promise was given he believed god and it was credited to him as righteousness and then came the promise because he believed god and so for us who believe not after seeing but we believe even without seeing blessed are those who believe who not seen but yet have believed hallelujah we have not seen the resurrection of jesus we have not seen the physical person of jesus but yet have believed and so blessed are we who have believed and for us who have believed who come in the lineage of the faith of abraham who are the offspring of abraham by faith in the pattern of the faith of abraham as it is written verse 17 i have made you a father of many nations he is our father in the sight of god in whom he believed the god who gives life to the dead and calls things that are not as though they were who is able to give life to the dead and calls things that are not as though they were this is who our god is the everlasting god the one who is the creator of all things who sustains all things who is able to even bring to victory what has been defeated once what has been defeated can be brought back to victory again what looks like dead can be brought to life again what has failed can be made to work again the organ that failed can be made to function again the abnormal, the abnormal levels of a physical condition can be brought back to be made normal again what is called as a terminal disease a disorder that comes by birth or that lasts forever till death can be made to be changed again can be brought back to normal condition again as it has to be as it was created as god intended it to function a dead marriage relationship can be made you know can be brought back to life again hallelujah a divorced person can be remarried to the same person again not to someone else hallelujah 
it is possible god is able to do miraculous things in supernatural ways in unexpected ways god does things he is the creator of all things he is a sustainer of all things what is dead can be brought back to life again a dead person physically dead declared dead there's a beautiful documentary of how a dead person who came you know a person who felt very uncomfortable in his uh, body who was you know just going through a heart condition that where his heart was failing was just walking he was he drove you know straight to the hospital and said something's going wrong with me and he drove into the hospital and walked into the lobby and while he was just heading towards the you know uh, the, the 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 doctor's office he he just collapsed on the way and he was taken to the icu immediately and a doctor was called for right away and and he was checked and the doctor declared that you know and they tried you know br- bringing him back to life and gave uh, you know all of those uh, shock treatments and everything to somehow revive the heart and repeatedly they tried and tried and some over 10 times and it all failed and finally the doctor said no he's gone and the report was written and you know and 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 things were just getting processed to you know uh to 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 do away with everything to close the chapter you know in the hospital and while just that was going on the doctor walked out of the the door and left that place a voice you know sounded in his ears saying go back and pray for him thank god he was a christian doctor and he went back he went back to pray for him and he was he said that was the day where he had the least amount of faith you know to really pray for anybody and he just knew that you know he had seen they've tried and everything failed and there's no way this person survived he's dead the chapter is closed he went back and just laid his hands on this man and began to pray and he prayed a few minutes and the nurse who was just doing all the paperwork you know was just shocked to see what he was you know doing and he prayed for a moment and then and then suddenly there was something that happened that that shocked the doctor and everybody around you know there was suddenly there were movements in the fingers he suddenly began to jerk a little bit and he continued to pray and the man began to receive life he he received life and then they began to you know give some more immediately the doctor called for the others and said you know give that shock again and you know get the heart revived and then again they did it again and the heart revived back and began to function and they tested you know the ecg and it was normal hallelujah it was normal it began to function normally and then everybody was shocked this man was declared dead now the ecg is normal and the fingers are moving beginning to move and function and then you know after a couple of days in the icu he came back came back to life he began to walk on his feet he's back again alive hallelujah praise the lord praise the lord god still raises people from the dead even today and so this word of god that says This word of God that says that God who live who gives life to the dead and calls things that are not as though they were is not a false hope is not a false statement is not something that is just you know a religious statement in a religious book that just makes some people feel good when they read it it's not a false hope but as the word of god says in verse 18 against all hope abraham in hope believed and so became the father of many nations just as it had been said so shall your offspring be without weakening in his faith he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead you see faith doesn't say that faith doesn't stop you from facing the fact hear me well just because you got faith doesn't mean that you don't face the fact that's the error of the prosperity teaching or the error of the way, word of faith movement the false teaching of the word of faith movement propagated by kenneth hagin kenneth copeland and all of them you know of where you don't face the fact oh even when you when you're sick you don't say you are sick you say i'm well i'm healed no that's wrong The Bible talks about facing the fact. Yes, that I am as good as dead. Abraham knew that he is as good as dead. You know, 
um, renouncing the fact that, that you don't accept what you are going through is not, is not right. That's a lie. To say, this is what I'm going through. This is what's going on in my life. This is what is happening to me. You know, saying, no, that's not happening to me is a lie. But in spite of what's happening to me, I believe that God is able to change this is what is faith. Hallelujah. And so when you even talk about faith, you got to be careful that you don't go to the extreme of saying, you know, I don't believe, you know, I don't, I don't confess that this is going wrong in, with me. They would say, you don't, you don't go to the doctor and say, I have a heart problem. If you, when you have one, if you don't go to the doctor and say, I don't have a heart problem, he would turn around and ask you, you're nuts, why did you come here? You see, that's what they preach and say, this is how you say, no, that's wrong. Look at the verse, look at scripture. Verse 19, without weakening in his faith, Yes, he had faith. He was tr trusting God that God who promised he would give him a child, will certainly give him a child. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead. He faced the fact, my body is as good as dead. I've gone past the age of, you know, rearing children. Facing the fact that his body was as good as dead. Since he was about 100, 100 years old and that Sarah's womb was also dead, he faced the fact. Sarah had gone past the age of childbearing. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had the power to do what he promised. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Don't get carried away by this word of faith movement and teaching that comes on Christian television. A lot of jargon comes on it. A lot of junk comes on it, which is not right, biblically not right. Read the scripture very well, study and see, and see if everything that is being said and taught, even if I'm teaching it, see if it's right according to the light of the word of God. Hallelujah. It's important that we don't get carried away. If I have a sickness, I should not deny and say, I don't have sickness. Sickness is there, that's real. And sickness is natural. We are in a fallen world and sickness is there, infections are there, Cor you know, pollution is there, corruption is there, evil, sinfulness in the world is there. We, as we live in a fallen world, things that happen in a fallen world do happen and everybody goes through it. You have a record of it even in the New Testament, in the early church. Paul's assistants were sick, Paul himself was sick. There was people who had stomach problems. And so Paul says, take a little wine for your stomach's sake. And don't that, take that to the extreme and go to Tasmac. Take a little wine for your stomach's sake. Some people said, amen, praise the Lord for that. You see, we can, there were people who were sick. Let me show that to you. Some of you are looking as if it's not in the Bible. Philippians chapter 2, Paul's assistants were sick, Paul himself fell sick. Verse 25 onwards, but I think it is necessary to send back to you Epaphroditus, my brother, fellow worker and fellow soldier, who is also your messenger, whom you sent to take care of my needs. My needs. Paul is talking about his needs. Paul had needs. As a believer, we will still have needs. You know, some people say, if you really believe right, you will not have any need at all. Everybody will have needs. For he longs for all of you and is distressed because you heard he was ill. Right under the nose of Paul, there was a man who was ill, who was serving God. If you serve God, you will never fall sick. If you're a Christian, you will never fall sick. If you confess the word daily, you will never fall sick. If you say thousand praises every day, you will never fall sick.
If you run Blessing TV all through the day, you will never fall sick. I thought somebody will say an amen. For he longs for all of you and is distressed because you heard he was ill. Indeed, he was ill and almost died. But God had mercy on him and not on him only, but also on me to spare me sorrow upon sorrow. Therefore, I am all the more eager to send him so that when you see him again, you will be glad and, and now I may have less anxiety. Paul had anxiety about the condition of the church at Philippi. As a believer, will be anxious. It's all right to be anxious. It's natural to be anxious. You know, spiritual life does not mean you become some kind of a, a alien being in the spirit, moving around in the spirit and just living in a, happening to live in a body. Some people have kind of, uh, you know, imagine spiritual life to be something like that, insulated from everything and isolated from everybody. This is a natural life which everybody lives, right? The person next door also that lives the same kind of life, has the same kind of problems, has the same kind of needs. You, you know, who could jump up and down, back and forth to the roof in the spirit can also have the same needs and have the same problems. Hallelujah. We who can speak the tongues of angels and see mysteries and visions and dreams. And even if you can travel in the spirit like Philip did to the Ethiopian eunuch. Go to the States and come back without a visa or a passport or an airline ticket. Even if you can do that, you still are a human being. Not a spirit being. Hallelujah. We will have the same needs, same problems. But in the midst of all of that, the beauty is there is faith on God and the power of God that is available to change those circumstances, to help us in times of need. We have a God who is merciful. Now you may have a question, why then do if God is merciful and all of that, he's powerful, and why does he allow all these problems? Why do all, does he allow all these needs? That's a big million dollar question. Everybody is asking from an atheist to an agnostic, to a hedonist, to a, to a believer, to a Pentecostal. Everybody's got the same question. Why does God allow these things? You see, firstly, God is sovereign. God is sovereign. And through all of, and, and secondly, we live in a fallen world. And thirdly, God has given us free will. God has given us the freedom of choice. To choose good and evil. And God has given us the freedom of all kinds of everything. To love, not to not love, to be good, not to be good. Everything. He's given us a freedom. And so as we function in this freedom, sometimes we make wrong choices in life. As a result of wrong choices, we end up with its consequences. Sometimes with its consequences. There are also at other times when nobody's made a mistake. And yet, sometimes bad things happen to good people too. And we find in scripture that God permits such things for his glory. The man born blind was born blind from birth. And they, they came and challenged him and asked him, is it because of his sin or the sins of his parents? And Jesus said it is neither his sin nor the sin of his parents. But that the work of God may be displayed for the glory of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God permitted suffering in the life of Job because at the end of it, God revealed who he is to Job. Through all of that suffering, there was the experience of God, the reality of God. He was meeting God face to face. And Job finally says, I've heard about God, but now I have seen him. I've heard about God, but now I have seen him. There was an incredible revelation of God through the suffering, through the pain. When he was asking why, Lord, he was trying to reason why this happened, why this, these problems, why these kinds of sufferings. But God had a purpose. God always has a good purpose in everything he does. And so the scripture says, for all things work together for good to them who love God. 
called according to his purpose somewhere in the middle of all of these things where we can't find answers where we where it's quite confusing and we are wondering why and asking questions through all of this god is working out his perfect plan in our lives that is for our good and for his glory and so joseph would say what man intended for evil god turned it around for good hallelujah Praise the Lord. Through all of the sufferings, Paul, who's suffering for the sake of the gospel, who's being persecuted, he's doing a good thing. He's preaching the gospel. He's healing the sick. He's raising the dead. He's proclaiming a good news. But see, he's persecuted all the time. But when in a, at the end of it all, always Paul would say for his glory, for the sake of the glory. And he considers suffering for Christ as a privilege. Hallelujah. Suffering in this world should be considered as a privilege to bring glory to the master through everything god is able to bring glory certain things happen because of our wrong choices sometimes we have to deal with the consequences of wrong choices for a whole lifetime but god still gives us the grace and sustains us sustains us but the, the beautiful thing is that there is faith even in the times of need while we face the fact that things are going wrong, while things are going so bad, while things are so challenging, while we don't have the answers, while we don't know why. In the midst of all of that, there is faith and hope in God that sustains us. Why? How? It's because we know that he who is promised is faithful. Because we know he who promised is the one who is able, who has the power to accomplish what he said. And so while we, we, can, we can be weak on one side and yet be strong at the same time. <laughs> we can be weak on one side in the flesh with our needs, looking at our circumstances looking at the problems we are facing, while you think of it, while you imagine what would it be, how would it turn, it turn out to be, where is this going to take me to, while you imagine of all of those things in the future, about the future and we begin to fear, you know, by the way, some people say, you will have no fear at all. Faith is, does not mean the simply the absence of fear. Faith does not mean just the blind, just simple absence of fear. You can be afraid. It's possible to be afraid. It's possible to be overwhelmed. It's possible to be burdened. It's possible to be worried. It's possible to be anxious. Jesus himself was burdened. At the garden of Gethsemane, you see him burdened, you see him anxious, you see him, you know, pressed, you see him getting crushed on every side. It's not, faith is not just the absence of fear. Faith is putting our trust in who God is and what he can do. Hallelujah. But that has the power to drive out fear. That has the power to drive out fear does not mean faith is not just only the absence of fear you might be a person of faith jesus was full of faith did jesus lack faith but in his humanness on one side there he was overwhelmed while he knew he was going into the garden of gethsemane and from there it's going to the cross of course the physical suffering on one side but more than that his fellowship with the father is going to be cut off the the sin of the whole world is going to come upon him darkness is going to come not that he was afraid of darkness but you see on the cross he cries out saying my father my father why have you forsaken me he was going to go through that forsakenness as he was doing going to be doing the work of redemption on the cross his fellowship with the father his intimacy with the father is going to be cut off for a while he knew he's going to rise from the dead. But this going through paying the penalty of the sin for the sin of the whole world is, is a huge thing. 
but for which he came he knew and so he says father if it is your will let this cup pass from me nevertheless not my will but your will be done he felt weakness he felt he was in need turn with me to luke's gospel chapter 22 in verse 42 22 42 43 44 father if you are willing take this cup from me yet not my will but yours be done an angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him why does it say he strengthened him angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him you may have weak moments you may have times and seasons where you are really weak you really feel you don't have the strength you don't have the courage you don't have the will you don't have the power you don't have the 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 energy to pray to fight to wrestle in prayer you don't feel it but those are times when god is able to strengthen us that's why in isaiah we read do you not know have you not heard he is the everlasting god the creator of all things even the youths may grow weary and tired young men may fall but they who hope in the lord will be renewed in their strength hallelujah abraham his faith was not weakened without weakening in his faith you might be emotionally weak you might be psychologically weak you might be mentally weak you just don't know what decision to take you don't know what which way to turn you don't know what to say where to go whom to find where to get help do we say yes or do we say no do i go forward or do i go backward do i proceed or do i retreat sometimes we don't know and in 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 times like that where we are surrounded by so many things where they are pressing us they are crushing us they, are, they we don't know how to handle it you know god helps us to remain strong and and be able to believe those are the times where our faith you know becomes you know a thing that overtakes our human weaknesses where our faith in god faith in the fact that he has the power to do what he said faith in the fact that he is all powerful that he is everlasting faith in the fact that he is he has the power he has the power to do what he said and that he is able to call things that are not as though they were he is able to bring life into what is dead faith in the fact of who he is and what he can do is what keeps us strong keeps us to face the world keeps us to face the suffering faith keeps us to go through the suffering and come through it abraham was not waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and just left to wait but there came a day a day there came a moment in his life there came a point in his life when suddenly he heard a good news that there was a baby going to be born hallelujah at a time when it was gone past all possibilities hallelujah at a time when it has gone past all possibilities god is able to make you to come through hallelujah but if we will just hold on to him without weakening in our faith if we will just hold on to his promise in the word of god if we will just hold on to who he is his power his capacity his ability if we will just hold on to who god is and what he can do and these serve as examples the bible says all the old testament narratives serve as examples for us and these illustrate to us why these men suffered why these men went through what they went through because they serve as encouraging stories for you and me 
to continue to stay strong even in times of need hallelujah hallelujah if we will not be weakened in our faith and the enemy will try hard to fight your faith he will try to weaken your faith he will try to 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 to, to turn around and say curse god and die but we are while you are at that point when you just want to throw your hands up in the air and say i give up on god while well, mrs job suggested to give up on god i think he turned around and said well you go ahead she advised him to give up on god she you know he turned around and said well you go ahead if you want to hallelujah praise the lord there was a man who was wrecked in his body with because of the effects of polio his hands and legs and all of that he can't even move a bit and he was fully paralyzed um suddenly at the age of 14 or something like that he was one of the last cases of polio in the states and uh, about 50 years back now but he had a great dream he wanted to become a uh, a a sports teacher physical education teacher as so he had a great dream and he wanted to become a physical education teacher and he was planning for this and he he was running around he wanted to play the guitar he wanted to learn music he wanted to fly an aeroplane these were his big dreams and he was going growing up like every other child but he little did he know that this some there's something like this would happen to him and when it happened it wrecked his whole life and he began to go for physiotherapy and all of those things and uh, treatments and somehow tried to move uh, his hands and feet and all that and he got a um you know uh, um an ankle bone fixed to his wrist bone and all of that you know all of those surgeries and everything happened some are trying to get him revived and they spent a lot of money on his uh, health and everything and after all of that um he he found a friend who could play the guitar and he could hardly move his fingers he could just move move it just like this little bit and so you know his friend who tried to teach him to play the guitar you know uh, after repeated attempts said it's so hard for you to play because he couldn't move both his hands and it was very difficult and so his friend told him why don't we give up and so this guy said no all right you go ahead <laughs> his friend told him you let's give up this guy who was affected let him give up but he didn't give up he kept persisting and kept persisting kept working and kept trying and kept praying but you know finally god helped him to learn to play the guitar and he plays the guitar and sings so beautifully now well he can't move his hands much his hands are so lean his uh, is his skin and bones he got his watches here like you got a wrist watch here this part of his hand is like a wrist for him so small but he in spite of that and he is flown about 900 hours already 900 hours in such a condition he learned to fly an aeroplane and he began to and he's flown for fun for 900 hours already isn't it amazing how people who trust god in spite of their inabilities in spite of their limitations in spite of their needs in spite of everybody who would come around and say give up they still don't give up because they trust in a great big god who is able to do the impossible hallelujah god has the power to do what he said jesus was going through this phase in his life where he was feeling that weakness that overwhelming burden being crushed from every side but yet an angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him some of the greatest men of god were weakest at certain points in life at certain times in life don't ever think because somebody comes up on a pulpit and shouts out loud never goes through any weakness or any pain or any difficulty any problem some people look at some great men of god look at the way they prophesy oh show sure. they just wave the hand and thousands of people fall don't think they don't, they don't have any problems just because thousands of people fell when they waved the hand they have their weak moments as well 
but what helps them to come back again to do the same to do what they do is because they don't give up on God hallelujah hallelujah some of the stories of the great men of God who are used mightily you hear their stories or you hear what they're going through is so hard one of the one very very popular man of God who's going through a very tough time in his marriage recently told me how he's unable to sleep at nights he's one of those faces you will see on wall posters all over the city and other cities in 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 South India he told me how you know he's going through spondylitis and he you know he has nobody to even apply ointment uh, balm on his back he has nobody to do that and he's in the prime of life he's in the best of his days in terms of ministry wise but he's going through such a hard time in his family he's crying every day praying every day trying to encourage the children every day and saying don't worry mommy will come back but in spite of the tears he goes up to encourage other people and strengthen the faith of others and he's able to do what he does is because he has not give up on he given up on god hallelujah it's possible to be weak but it's also possible to rise above the weakness hallelujah it's possible to be weak it's natural to be weak we don't deny the weakness is we don't deny the pain but yet it is possible to rise above it to rise above it jesus rose about it an angel appeared from heaven and strengthened him just after elijah had brought fire down from heaven and killed all of the prophets of baal and he had shown the power of god in all of his magnificence that one of the greatest dramatic stories of who god is through a man while he was in the pinnacle of his success comes a woman right next just after that had happened a woman comes and challenges and says by this time tomorrow i'll make you like one of the prophets of baal whom you killed one challenge one threat shocked him made him weak in a moment and he said god i give up let me die dig my life why have you kept me alive if that can happen to elijah it can happen to you and me as well god sent an angel thank god because we have such a loving god who strengthens us again and again again and again god sent an angel sent him food sometimes you just got to go and eat somewhere in some nice place some people are saying good amen I'm thinking when we can go sometimes you just have to do some barbecue that's it try it some people don't eat when they are weak but jesus you know wants you to eat while peter you know went fishing and gave up on his ministry and said oh our master is gone we don't have income now who will provide food for us let's go fishing he went fishing and then he found nothing and god jesus said cast the net on the other side and got a whole lot of fish and brought it back and jesus what did he do the first thing he he gave was gave them fried fish sometimes you just need some good food to strengthen yourself but that's not my point the point is that god sent an angel to strengthen elijah but even after he ate and drank you know what he did win back back to square one and that's what sometimes god has to do some you know repeated attempts to get the engine going he has to crank us up really well again and again to break back and the angel came again and said elijah get up you have a long way to go you have to go and anoint kings there came a whisper from heaven and god began to speak to him again no your time is not over your ministry is not over your job on earth is not done you you have greater things in store you know there are things that you have to accomplish how can you settle look at this woman jezebel and be afraid 
look at don't look at some threatening situation and be afraid because god is able to strengthen you there is a bigger purpose in your life it don't to, don't give up too soon at the brink of a miracle don't give up too soon while god has greater plans in store there are times where god helps us in those weak moments he strengthens us he gives us a word of encouragement he gives us a promise he gives us a prophetic word or he gives us you know he does something you know to just tell us to let us know that you know things are going to be all right he gives us a message he gives us a song some way he strengthens us he strengthened elijah he was able to rise up over the 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 threat and the fear that he had and he was able to fight against it and he began to walk on f- with that food that he had had he went on for 40 days hallelujah when god strengthens you he really strengthens you big time hallelujah when he strengthens you he helps you to go on a long time and do the things that he wants you to do brother sister there are great things that god wants you to do there are great things that god has in store for you because of the greatness that god has placed upon your life and the great plans he has for you the enemy finds fights you the hardest possible you might ask questions like why me why so much of problems only for me because there are great things that you can accomplish and great plans god has and the enemy knows that if only you are encouraged if only you are strengthened if only you become bold and if you only you rise up above this weakness he will become a threat to his kingdom and so he does his best to weaken you as much as possible don't give room for the weakness the moment you identify the weakness tell yourself i'm going to rise above this pray that god will strengthen your faith hallelujah jesus told the disciples to pray in the garden of gethsemane that they will not enter into temptation that they will not become weak and fall away that's why he told them pray it's prayer that will strengthen you it's a word of god that will strengthen you it's a word that god gave to abraham that strengthened him that that kept him from becoming weak in his faith when jesus had prayed he was praying in the garden of gethsemane why should he pray he was god himself he was praying he told the disciples to pray also so that they will not become weak and fall away from the faith prayer will keep us strong help us to be strengthened angels from heaven will be sent to strengthen us god sends his angels sometimes we don't realize we don't know that god had sent an angel to strengthen us but god sends his angels to strengthen us that's why you've still survived looking at all that you've been through you could have been done away with a long time ago if only the grace of god and angels who came to sustain you and strengthen you didn't do their work hallelujah you are a sitting living miracle today hallelujah you are a living miracle sitting here right next right here next to your neighbor hallelujah look at your neighbor they are here because it's a miracle don't say ugly face but it's because of a miracle Hallelujah. It's because of a miracle that God, the enemy tried to fight against them. The enemy tried to destroy them. The enemy tried to belittle them. The enemy tried to intimidate them. The enemy put fear in their hearts. The enemy, the enemy threatened them. The enemy brought overwhelming things that would crush them. The enemy brought, you know, the enemy hindered their blessing again and again for a long time. But yet God has strengthened their faith. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This morning I pray that you will be strengthened in your faith. Even if nothing seem to work out, even nothing seem to change, be strong, be strengthened in your faith, believing that the the Lord has a power to do what he what he said. He has the power to do what he said and he's able to bring back to life what is dead. He's able to call things that are not as though they were. He's able to send angels to strengthen. He's able to provide bread. from heaven above man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of god he himself is the living bread jesus said i am the bread of life 
I am the bread of life. While you are in fellowship with Jesus, participating in the living bread, in fellowship with the living bread, taking Jesus into your life, having Jesus as a central person of your life, having Jesus as a central, you know, person of your family, having Jesus at the center of everything you do, being, will, being ready to glorify him for everything. Will you have Jesus as your bread? Hallelujah. I want to tell you, there will be a strength that will come to you. A strength in your faith, a strength in your inner man, a strength in your will, strength in your mind, strength in your emotions. God is able to strengthen you in a supernatural way. Like he did for Elijah, like the father sent an angel for Jesus. Like a word, a promise that was given to Abraham, God is able to strengthen you and keep you strong without weakening in your faith. He is able to see make you to see the thing that you are anticipating. He's able to help you walk through the fire. He's able to walk you through the waters that you will not be drowned. You will not be burned when you go through the fire. Hallelujah. This morning receive the strength of God. But they who hope in the Lord will be renewed in their strength. They will mount on wings as eagles. They will walk and not be weary. They will run and not be faint. Hallelujah. Weariness will leave you. Strength comes even this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.